The other thing you'll notice too is that we have these buttons across the top here. Starting with calendar. Calendar is a really cool feature. Number one, students can actually sync this with the, their school account calendars. So if they have a Google calendar or uh, an Outlook calendar, they actually can sync this calendar with that and those notifications will pop up on their school calendars saying that they've got something due. This will automatically take any assignments that have due dates on them and add it to this calendar for the students. So anytime you have an assignment or a discussion board that has a due date, that due date will show up on the calendar automatically for the students. You also can add things like uh, office hours, or if there's an additional, uh, you know, if there's something else you want to do, you can add an event to this, and it will automatically sync to the students' calendars and allow them to see that something is coming up for your class. Great feature. Students really seem to like this because they get the notifications. They can see it on their calendars. Um, so I would, I would highly suggest telling your students to look at the, the calendar feature. The next one is announcements. Uh, announcements work just a little bit differently in, in Ultra than they do uh, in Original. So you come to the Announcements tab, and if you're ready to create a new announcement, we click on the plus button, we'll put in the title, tell it who, which classmates or class members need to see it, put in your message. You also have the choice of sending that email at, or sending that announcement as an email to your students. And so it'll send out a blind carbon copy email to all your students. Or you can schedule it to, um, you know, to be sent in the, in the future, and you can have it on the show on date, you can have it hide on date, um, and that. The great thing about the announcements on this, when the students log into the page and there's a new announcement, the students actually get a pop-up in front of them on their screen in their class that says, hey, you've got a new announcement, click here to read it. And they have to either close that window or click on the announcement to get to their class. So it's almost not guaranteed, but it is pretty darn close that they will see at least that there is an announcement there that needs to be read. So announcements, that's that, you know, those, those are great there. You can always come back in and edit these. Uh, you can put in recordings, you can embed um, links to your classes, things like that. Super great tool, would, would highly suggest um, using those. Uh, the next thing you'll see is your discussion boards. You can, um, you can create a new discussion board here. There are two ways to create a discussion board. One is to do it here. Uh, and the other one is to do it from the main page, which we'll show you, show you in a second. You can get to your grade book directly from, um, from the main page here. We've got a whole section coming up in the next hour on grade book. So I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on grade book now, other than the fact is that you can get to um, the grade book directly from there. Uh, this is your messages tab. So if you wanna send individual messages to students, this is where you would come to do that. And this is also where the replies from students will come for you as the instructor will be in this messages tab. You can send individual messages to a student. You can send a group message that everybody can see who, who is on the message, or you can send a group message where it is anonymized and it's, it's blind carbon copied for everybody. So if you wanna send out an announcement to, or a message to everybody that's missing exam one, all the other students won't see who's on the ex missing exam one, um, and it'll just come through. It looks like it's an individual message to them, uh, but you know that you sent it out to the whole group and it saves you some time on that. The other thing is the analytics tab, which is absolutely fantastic. There's a lot of information that we have now surfaced for you as the instructor to kind of get a better grasp on how your students are doing in your class. This was not always very evident when it was in uh, Blackboard Original. It took some time to get to these things. Um, but I can come in and see that I've got Jenny, who has an overall grade of zero, and I have this nice little flag here that tells me, oh, she's fallen below um, the average in the class. I can customize these alerts and tell them what, um, what you want them to be. So if I come into alert settings, I can customize what I want my alerts to be. So if I want to say if a student ever drops below 70% in my class, that it would send me a notification and would also put a notification on the student's timeline that we looked at the activity stream that we looked at earlier. Students also have an activity stream and it would send them a notification there and said, hey, you've not logged into your English 101 class in seven days. Consider doing that now. And it would give them the link to go directly to their class. Or it may say, hey, you've dropped below 70% in your math 101 class. Consider, you know, whatever. Um, you can also do how many missed due dates. So if a student has missed three due dates in your class, it will send you an alert and it'll send the student alert automatically. You can change that. You could be four, it could be five, it could be one, whatever you want it to be. 
And the last one, I think, especially for your online classes where you've got to make sure students are attending your class every, you know, seven or 14 days, whatever your, your limit is here, you can put a notice on here that if a student hasn't logged into that particular class for a set number of days, whatever that number is for you, maybe you want to give them seven so they got seven more days to log in, you can set that alert to be seven as well, or 10, or 11, or two, or three, whatever you want it to be. Uh, and this will notify you as the instructor, but also will notify the students. Um, and this will also send an activity stream notification that I just said, that the students will be able to see that on their Blackboard when they log in and see any alerts that have been sent to them. I think that's a pretty cool setting. It's something you don't have to mind, you don't have to think about anymore. It just does it for you. So that's also a time saver for you as a faculty member, just it automatically sends those reminders out to your students. Um, so in this, you can see, um, stu see a student's overall grade, see if there's any flags, any flags for missed uh, due dates. You can see how much time the students have spent in your class, actively engaged in your class. Um, and you also can see the number of days since their last access. So if you're talking about doing attendance in your online classes and you need to look at, you know, make sure the students has at least logged into your class in the past 14 days, you can go to your class, go to this view, and you can see any students that haven't logged in uh, within that period of time. You also can sort it by those days. So if you want to look at the students who have, who have missed the most number of days, you can sort it by that. So you can just pull off the top five or 10 or anything above or below the 14, whatever your, your cutoff is here. I believe it's 14. You also can do it um, just with students with alerts. If you want to see just any students that have alerts, or you can look at students without alerts. I don't have any in this one because this is a little bit older class. But if you wanted to do that, you can you, you can definitely filter that. Also, a cool view here is just kind of a, a visual representation of that, where the number of um, hours in your class versus the um, the overall grade. And you can see students, uh, you can click on students, see this person spent not a lot of time in my class, but they've got a good grade. Maybe I want to look into that and then go into view details and it will take me to that person's individual report. So student comes to your class, to your office again during office hours and says, hey, I'm struggling. And you realize, man, you've only spent 25 minutes in my class. You've not really interacted with the material. You can pull this up and show them visually, hey, you've not really put in the, the time and effort that it would take to be successful what can we do? What strategies can we come up with to make sure that you're you're doing that? You can download these reports. So if you ever needed it to attach it to your navigator, to your EAB for reports for student progress, or if an advisor calls, you can download these reports and send them to them. And they will have some file that they can work with the students or may become part of a student's record, something like that. However, you guys wanna use those, but you can download these reports. So analytics, I mean, we can get much, much deeper into this, but I think that that's a good overview of some of the things you can do. Uh, and the last one are groups. So if you use groups in your class, uh, it's easier than ever to create groups, to manage groups, to, uh, you know, to, to do group assignments. Um, that's right here. And to obviously you can import groups if you've got them laid out in an Excel sheet, you can import those groups directly into uh, Ultra, or you can come up with your own group set and just create uh, groups based on your class. So if you do group work, it's much, much, much more simple um, to set those up and for the students to use. Um, I'm not going to dive deep into that because it's, you know, some people use it, some people don't. So I don't want to spend the time on that unless there's a particular question about uh, groups. So we'll come back to the main page. Um, and we'll talk a little bit more later to, again about how to build a class. Um, but basically, there are a couple buttons, couple new things that will become your friends when you see them. First of all, are these little plus buttons that turn purple. This, if you want to add any content, if you want to add uh, any files, if you want to add any LTI tools, such as Pearson or McGraw-Hill, anytime you see that purple plus, you click on it and this is where you go to add any of the content that you want to. So if I come in and do create, this will give me the option to create learning modules, folders, documents, um, you know, a URL link. I can create assessments, tests. So anything that you need to create to add to your class, that purple plus button, wherever that is, is where that happens. So also remember, if you think back to the original Blackboard, you would go in and create a test. 
And then it would go into that test folder. And then you would have to take that test and go to where you wanted it and to deploy that test where it is. You don't have to do that anymore. So let's say I want to do, I want to do a quiz between modules one and two. So I click that, I click create, I come down to test. And I'll call this, we'll just leave it as new test. I'll add just, uh, and we're going to get into assessments earlier. So I just wanted to show you how this works. Um, false. Save it. I'm ready to deploy it. Look, it's already right there where I wanted it to go. I don't have to go and deploy that test. I don't have to go to another tab and grab it and put it here. It just is wherever I tell it that I want it to go. So that can also save you some time as well. Um, anytime you create new content, a new folder, a new uh, document, a new test, it always comes in as hidden from students, just in case you need to do a double check, make sure your quality control, you don't want it open live to students and you've messed up something. So you can create your whole class in the background and then just go and unhide it all at one time. Um, or you can build a whole week or whatever you want to do. But this just is a, an extra safeguard for you as an instructor that you don't publish something that you didn't mean to or that you made a mistake on, something like that, and have to take it back and republish it. So it gives you a second chance to look at whatever it was that you just created. When you're ready to release it to students, you click on uh, on the drop down button beside. Uh, sorry, I keep clicking on the thing. Pull that down, make it divisible to students. Voila, there you go. Now it's live and active for students to take your exam for your test or see documents or whatever. Um, another feature um, that another, I guess, nomenclature that might be a little bit different than what we than what we talk about in original is this concept of a document, ultra documents. So a document in this case in ultra is just kind of a blank slate is a blank canvas for you to add any kind of content that you want on this. You can use this to put in um, HTML if you've got that. You can upload videos, you can upload files, you can upload uh, PDFs, you can upload PowerPoint slides. So this just kind of becomes that the, the canvas. Think of it as like almost like a website, like a web page. And you can build this however you want to. So you can come in and add content to it. Uh, and this gets the traditional uh, box that you're used to seeing. And you can say, you know, welcome to the class. And then I can come in and I can, you know, obviously do all of my rich text editing. I can make it bold, italics, underlines, text options, um, you know, things like that. I can center it, align it, do whatever. I can add a, a URL link directly to this if I want to. I can attach an, uh, a file. I don't think we have any files on here to attach right now. Um, but you can do uh, any Microsoft Word documents, any PDFs, any things like that um, to it. You can add pictures directly from here. Uh, and you can also add, uh, for any math instructors, the math equation editor is a part of this as well. So if you want to come in and say the log of six times four equals whatever, I'm not a math instructor, sorry if I messed that up, but it has all of the math symbols and things that you may use. Um, media, this is can be any videos that you want to embed into this. If you use Kaltura or any of those video management tools, you can add that directly here. You can pull in YouTube videos. So if you go and say, I want to put in a YouTube video, uh, it will bring up the, um, the interface here. If you know the URL to the YouTube video, you can paste it there. And the great thing is when it pulls it in, it'll strip out any advertising that's in the, the YouTube video. So if you just put the YouTube link in there, you may have to see advertisements and things like that. If you add it through our embed tool like this, it strips out all of those advertising. So students, so you don't have to worry about a student seeing an inappropriate advertisement on a video that you're trying to show them. If you don't know what kind of video you want, you actually can search YouTube videos here and say, uh, intro to marketing. I was a marketing instructor. And actually have YouTube go and suggest videos for me. And then I can just select that. Um, um, and then, so you get two options. Either you can have it open in a new window or you can actually have it just open in line in the document itself. So the students never have to leave Blackboard to go to YouTube to see it. It'll just bring that video and embed it directly into, um, into Blackboard for you. So I'll just do insert and just click save. And now it says, obviously this video is unavailable, but that's how that would work.
Um, also, if you are using any um, LTI publishers like um, McGraw-Hill or Pearson or Cengage or any of those things, if you're using MindTap or you know any of those, if you come into uh, Content Market is where those tools will live. And any of the tools like Cengage or McGraw-Hill will live here. And you can put the links to uh, to your LTI tools directly on a page like this, or you can have it on the content page at the beginning. So uh, adding LTI links have gotten incredibly easy as well. Um, and so this is basically how you do it. So we'll come back out of this page. I didn't really do anything to it. Um, but this is what... Um, This is this was this is a document. As you can see, it's it's fully um fully kind of built out. Uh, so you can put in images, you can put in headers, you can put in YouTube videos that play directly in in, in the long or in the line. So you don't have to, like I said, don't have to send them out to YouTube and make sure they can navigate back. Uh, you can put in tables, charts. Um, yeah. Um, we'll talk about auto. We'll talk about this auto generate test bank in a, in a just a little bit when we get into assessments. Um, the other cool thing that I do want to show you, uh, and we'll take, we'll, we're going to scatter some of our AI tools that we built into Learn uh, kind of throughout the day. Um, so one of the first ones, what I want to talk about is adding um, adding pictures. So how many people like to add pictures to their class? How many people have to go to like Canva or find like these royalty free things, edit it, make sure it's the right size, make sure you don't have copyright infringements, things like that. It's a pain in the butt, right? So we've added this cool new tool called Unsplash. We have partnered with Unsplash. So any place that you go that you want to add an image, if you go to um, insert image and select, pull the select down to stock images from Unsplash. So this will, first of all, you notice that it pre-populated this with search features. What it did was looked at the context of the page that I was on and said, what kind of image would he possibly maybe want? So this could save you some time from needing to come up with, oh, I don't know what kind of image I want. Based on the context of the page, it will suggest, hey, let's do corn and agriculture and see what kind of pictures we can come up with. If you don't like that, you can always close that out and come up with your own search term. But the great thing about these are all of these images that you see in here out of the thousands and thousands of images, they're all royalty free and they're all free for you to use. You don't have to download the file and then upload it in the Blackboard. So if I want to include this picture, you pick it. Can do, I can zoom in, I can zoom out, I can, you know, I can move this around. Go to next, it will insert the file for me. And also, for anybody that's looking out for accessibility, you know that you needed to add an alt text to that image for any, any students with screen readers that may have you know, vision impairments and things like that. This actually will go ahead and suggest that alternate text for you, or you can edit it for yourself. Uh, you can also just mark it as a decorative. And I'm going to put this as view only, save. And now that image is directly in my class. I can click on it and I can shrink it if I want to. Um, and then I can save it. Much easier than going out to the web, finding an image that looks right, downloading it, going into Blackboard, uploading it again, and doing all those things. So you can do that directly from the tool um, inside Blackboard. Anytime you see that rich text editor with the picture, you can add those pictures there. So I think about adding a picture to an exam. Uh, think about adding a piece of, if you're teaching an art class, you can find a Monet painting and say, you know, add that to your test page and say, students describe what you see. And that can become a part of your test question. So any any place that has that rich text editor, you can insert images directly from there without needing to go and download them and, and bring them into your class. Again, small change, but I think it saves a lot of time and effort and just frustration um, from being able to do that. Um, again, again, you can see student progress on this page. You can see who's opened it, who's completed it, um, things like that. Um, you can still use folders. Uh, you can have a folder inside of a module. Folders are good for containing information. It's not good for navigation. Uh, and we know that most of your classes probably in original were built on folders. I would highly suggest that you rethink that and use the modules that we're talking about today and use folders for more something like this, like 
here are the, the absolute things you need to do for this section, but also I want to give you some extra review materials. Maybe these aren't necessary, maybe they're just added information, and you want to be able to contain them in a folder. So you can put them in a folder and put them inside the module and have documents within that. They just be kind of come more containers, um, but if you're going to use it for navigation, I would 100% suggest doing, um, doing these modules like we have here. Makes it easier for you to use student progress. Um, folders don't have student progress. Also, the navigation back and forth between pages for the students um, does not happen in, in folders, um, but it does happen in modules. So just to show the difference, we do have a folder here that's our start here folder. And so if I go in as a student preview, I'll show you what a folder does and why I think modules are better. If I do the start here folder and I open, open the syllabus, okay, I go through and I look at this, okay, I'm done. Remember with, with the modules, I could just click on the next button and go to the next file. If it's just in a folder, I now have to close this and then go to the next one and open that. You see, it just becomes tedious for students to click back and forth between that. But again, remember, if you do the modules, get this handy dandy um, navigation button at the top that the students can stay within this, not think about going back to the main page and then just navigate their way through the module this way. I think it makes navigation easier. We've got a lot of student feedback that, that the students like classes laid out like this, that it makes more logical sense to them. Um, also, you know, just just the researcher in me and the academic in me, we did some research, did some studying about, about consistent course design and, and students being able to go through this. The cognitive load that this saves off of students from from needing to switch back and forth between screens or, you know, if I'm in my English 101 class and I put on my English 101 hat, then I have to take that off and think, OK, how is my math instructor's class different than this and how is it structured differently? That that takes a lot of mental capacity for students to switch back and forth between four or five classes. If student, if, and I'm not saying we take away academic freedom, I'm not saying that at all, but if there's a consistent design and feel to the way all of the students' classes look, that's one less thing they have to worry about during their learning, and they can take that mental capacity and put it towards your material and remembering and learning and, you know, and, 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 and doing their assessments that they don't have to think about how is this course structured, where do I find this? It just removes that load from their, from their cognitive reasoning. So another good reason to, uh, to think about a little more logical flow of your classes from the way some of us have built them in original. I was guilty of that before too, before I learned better. So the question was, if it's inside a folder, you can you use progress tracking? You cannot. So like for so you see um, here, like there is no, there is no progress tracking on it. So if I'm in as a student, um, I mean, you'll be able to go into the grade book and see who started it that way but it won't have this visual representation of like how many of the four things you've seen. So when you, when you start here, it didn't have a start here button. It didn't have this progress tracking bar. So if you use folders, it, it will have a little button here that students can mark it that they did it, but it won't have anything. It won't have the same level of progress tracking as the modules. It will, it will mark that they opened the folder, but that's it. It won't say, did they see anything in it or did they spend any time on it? You just don't get the same level of, um, rigor to it if you do it in, in a folder. Folders are fine, but I think it adds another layer of, it, it, it just doesn't flow as well to me. Are there any other questions? I, I know I've been talking a lot. I've been talking for 42 minutes, it feels like. <laughs> Actually, it has been like 40 after we got started, but any questions about any of this? So the question is, if you send a message in black, and from here, where is the message housed? The message will be housed here in your messages, and you'll be able to see any messages that you send out to students, and students will get that in the same tab, but they'll also get it as an email um, to them as well. Yeah, so you'll be able to see if you've contacted them, how much, how many times you've contacted them, things like that. So the question was, if you look at the student progress report um, and it shows you if they've opened it or not, can you go deeper and see how many of them they've done? If you go into the student level of that, you can see uh, that particular student, how many of the things they've opened or not. Because we just figured it'd be overwhelming to put so much of the information about the whole class on the main page. But if you want to go one level deeper, you can see. So uh, reporting level, you would, if you look at the whole class, you're just going to see, did they start it and how much time or did they complete it? If you go to the individual student, then you can see how many of them they've done.
One other thing I do want to tell you about modules that I can tell you now is the, the option to do what we call forced sequencing. What I like about this is, is this, can, um, this can require students to actually complete everything in the module in the order that you've placed it, and the students can't open the next file until they've interacted with the first file. So think about if you're in a nursing class, you want to make sure that they go step by step and they're not skipping steps and they don't they can't just go to the quiz without interacting with the materials first. One of the options that doing this in modules can give you is that the students can uh, you can force the students to go through it in a sequential method so they can't just drop down to the last thing or go to the quiz or the discussion board. They actually have to go step by step. Um, you also can set um, things to be released based on um, performance. So this means that whatever it was that you say you can't open this folder until you've completed module one quiz, or if you do, you know, grade range, you've got to score a 78 on this quiz before you can go on to the next thing. So if you set something up to be, you know, unlimited number of attempts on a practice quiz, and you say my students need to score 80 on this practice quiz before they go to the next thing, you actually have that capability here to say, you know, if this were a practice quiz and I want them to have, um, a 40 or above out of 80 before they go on, I can set that performance requirement for them. Also, I can set it based on time and date. So if I want to go ahead and put something in the class and say, I don't want the test to come open until Friday night at seven o'clock and have it open till Sunday night at midnight, I can also do that. So if you pick whatever item you want to and then do show on whatever time and then you can had hide after, and that will only open that test for that period of time. So think about if you've got a, test, a student in online classes doing a makeup exam and you gave them a very specific time frame they had to do it in, you can show it and hide it based on, based on time uh, in your class as well. You can restrict it to specific members. So if you've got somebody that needs to take a makeup exam, you can put the restrictions just on that one student. So you don't have to change it for everybody. You can change it just for that one student. Um, so it becomes really flexible and gives you a lot of options of how you can um, how you can present your materials. I don't see the chat online, so I don't know if there's been any online questions that have come in that we need to ask about. Um, do the replies do the replies to the emails go back? Is that what you're saying? Is that what I'm asking, or do messages go? Because when you when you create a message, it goes to their Blackboard, but also goes to their school email that's attached to their Blackboard account. Is that the question that was being asked? Do specific students know it will apply to any students in the class that meet those criteria that you set? So it'll just be across the board. Any student that falls below 70 or whatever your threshold is, any student that falls below um, attendance or any student that's missed deadlines, unless that student has an accommodation attached to it, which we'll talk about in a little bit, um, that maybe, you know, they don't, have, maybe they get unlimited time on test or something like that, then they wouldn't get that due date, like exception uh, reminder. But, but usually those three alerts will be for anybody in the class that meets those criteria that you set. Can't limit it to just a certain group. So we had the three options for alerts. So it's either going to be based on overall grade, based on uh, missed due dates, or based on, um, you know, how many days you've logged into the class. So if you set these, it'll apply to everybody in your class and anybody in your class that meets these requirements for, for, for an alert will get the alert. So you can't take a subset of your class and say only these five students would get this alert. These other 15 won't. Um, you can, but these are customizable to be whatever, you know, so if I want this to be an 80 instead of a 70, I can change that. That's the five students that would get that alert, correct. Yeah, but you can't just have a subset of your class that only these certain ones get it and other ones don't. So the question was, what tools do students have in groups? Um, they have a shared workspace uh, and they can share like Word documents and things like that for them to work on. Any uh, tools like video would be up to whatever, I guess you guys are a Zoom school. So if you have that set up for students to use, they can use that. But there's not any native um, like video collaboration tool built into Blackboard, it'll depend on whatever tools that you guys uh, at Forsyth have made available to your students. So this is, I mean, this is from my, from the instructor side, I don't have any groups assignments set up, but if I have groups assignments here, the assignment will show up here. They'll have a way to send messages back and forth. They can see each other, um, you know, so they'll have some um, group workspace tools here 
Uh, but again, any video things like Zoom or anything like that, it's up to the school what they've made available, what you guys have made available to the students. So the question is, can you put a link and a document that would take you to a specific section of that document? Um, not necessarily, but you all, but you can add a course link to this to another document. Um, so if, you know, but so. I, I, I'm not going to tell you how to create your class, but if that's the case and your document is is this long, it might be too long. It might be better to break it up into smaller sections, into smaller documents, and then you can link from that document to another page to another document. But there's not like anchors, what you would call them, and, and website language. There's not an anchor text, so you can go to a specific part of that document right now. Um, they are working on in the next three to six months, there will be a table of contents added to a module so that you can see um, so there'll be one page that will have links to every one of the documents or any one of the assignments on one page that will automatically create for you as you add things to it um, but that that'll be in the next three to six months but no there's no like anchor text um, urls inside of a document so if you if you're in a document and so ally is our tool that we that we that we built uh, and we 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 own um, and we've ma recently made this available across for all instances, a very basic version of this. But what happens is, say, you see this little dial right here, the successibility score for this particular picture is low. So as the instructor, I can look at that and say, OK, what's wrong with it? And this tells me that this does not have a meaningful description. It doesn't have alt text that it considers to be full enough for a student with a screen reader. Um, there are also other accessibility tools built into this. Um, one of the frustrations, it, it, it's always funny to me that instructors moving from original to ultra is that that during the conversion process, it will check to make sure that your color contrast on your pages are appropriate. Um, and there were some instructors and in their original class would have a green background with yellow writing on it, which does not meet any ADA compliant, um, you know, color contrast. And we strip that out and make it what black text on white background. And some faculty members lose their stinking minds over us taking their color scheme away from them. But it's for ADA compliance. And that's just something we built into the tool because, you know, I mean, we, we need to be as compliant as we can and be as accessible to all of our students as possible. So that is one thing that it does limit the uh, like the color schemes. Also, you can look at alternative formats um, that you can download. The students can download an audio version or, a, you know, a Braille version of, of whatever documents that you upload. Also, if you record any um, audio feed or any video or audio feedback in Blackboard, which we'll talk about during the grading section, uh, that will also auto caption uh, those videos as well for ADA compliance. So, yes, there is a basic tool built in and you see this one has a green meter. Um, and so anytime that those uh, pictures are added or uh, documents are added, it will tell you the accessibility score and also give you suggestions as to how to fix it.